to have three minutes. Give me three minutes. Lean up, lean up, James. Lean up. Three minutes to win this fight. We, 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 we need it. Don't blow your nose. We got to have this last round. <sighs> I need this last round. Hear me? You want this fight, man? Listen, you want this fight, you yeah. can take it, okay? Yeah. You, but you got to be smart. Which one Don't give him nothing. Box, box the guy, box. keep the left hand, keep walking right, around to his right. Round okay? Up. Touch him up. You know what I'm saying? Right. Don't let him get nothing. He'll, he'll, he'll come out with a spurt, but I want you to be smart. Yeah. And then I get him home. Get home, right. get home you let him happen, baby. Fight. Get him home, let him happen. All right, here, here, here. Give me some prisoners, James. Let's get this motherfucker. All right. Counter punch. Get out of here. Okay? Get the dog. might still be able to pull this fight out. James Tony is going to have to work in this 12th round. A vast difference in experience may be evident here. It's the 48th professional fight of James Tony's career, the 15th for Montel Griffin. If, I, if I'm Griffin, I'll hit and hold. He'll be renowned if he can go 12 rounds with James Tony. If you're Tony, hey, keep your left jab going. Now you'll go with a right hand every now and then, but don't go trying to finish him and give him a chance to get a flash knock knockdown on you. And that one just missed, and it gives Griffin a clear picture of what Tony will be trying to do in the round. Good left hook inside by Tony. Come on, give me a clean round, guys. Give me a clean round. Griffin pushes James away, and now will fire the jab from time to time to try to keep Tony off of it. Tony comes forward with the right hand and lands it. And did it hurt? It was, on, it was high on top of the head. The only thing that kept Griffin up, the, the right hand was too high. It's got to be a on, left guys, uppercut in the right, right hand if Tony wants to catch him. He can't just throw his left jab out there. Somewhere in Chicago, Montel Griffin's Jehovah's Witness mother hates the fact that he's fighting. But he had to do what he wanted to do. It took him to the Olympics in 92. Can it bring him to an upset victory over James Tony tonight? For Tony, what's at stake is nothing short of the rebirth of his career in the wake of a devastating loss to Roy Jones. Can he once again be one of the best in the world? All right, bring it up, bring it up. Tony is true to the profession. He's seeking a knockout every minute. Punch the out. Come on, punch the out of there. And you never count out James's chance to score the knockout. Remember, he knocked out Prince Charles Williams in this ring last summer with 15 seconds to go. Griffin is doing what I would have told him to do. You make it 12 rounds, be famous. Don't go in there trying to mix it up with one of the best punchers in the uh, in this weight division. Tony is coming down the stretch like a thoroughbred here. If he needs this round to win the fight, he appears to be winning it. Yeah, I think Griffin just sort of ran out of gas, physically and, and maybe up. mentally as well in the last two rounds. Griffin looked up to the clock. He wanted to know how much time he's got. And now he gives it all he's got and finishes with a savage flurry. And both fighters dance around the ring in a victory What do you have, Harold Letterman? Jim, uh, Jim I got it seven rounds to five, 114, 112, James Tony. I thought James actually did pull out the last round. I thought he pulled out four out of the last five, to tell you the honest to God's truth. Uh, Montel Griffin certainly had a good round around round 11, made it very, very close. I had two 10-8 rounds without a knockdown because there were two really, you know, two really staggers that almost were knockdowns. I mean, certainly James Tony deserved the 10-8 in the third. Montel Griffin definitely deserved the 10-8 in the seventh, in the eighth, the seventh. 
pardon me. Uh, but I thought James Tony did enough punching to pull the fight out. I honestly think that this fight may be a split decision. So your instinct is to look for a split decision. And uh, I can see promoter Bob Arum in the ring looking over Michael Buffer's shoulder to try to get a look at the cards. And now let's go to Michael Buffer to find out who won the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand, we go to the scorecards. Dwayne Ford scores the bell. 114 to 114, he has it even. Bill Graham scores the bell. 115 to 113, and Art Lurie scores it 116 to 112 for the winner by majority decision, Montel. Ice. <laughs> for James Tony, and yet another lesson in how difficult it is to handle the subjective task of judging a boxing match. Larry Merchant stands by in the ring. Larry. James, your feelings about the scoring? I thought I won the fight. I did have to win the fight, but um, judges didn't see it my way, so he got the decision. Was he a tougher fight coming off such an emotional fight as your last one than you thought it would be? No, not at all. It was just, you know, just the judges, you know, me, I got a bad decision. Was he a hard guy to fight because no, of his size? No, not really. I, I did what I had to do to win. But hey, I didn't get the decision tonight. Oh, I'll be back. No problem. Are you in shock? No, nah, yeah, I'm in shock. Yeah, yeah, I'm in shock. I lost the fight, you know. I, I had to get beat. I'm in shock. The name. Thank you, James. No Jim? James Tony and Jackie Callen. Are you in shock, George? More than anything, than words could ever mention. Shocked. So you think this is a, uh, a highly questionable decision? It's really a blow to a wonderful sport. It's a blow to a wonderful gladiator. And really, it's an insult to a great night. I don't know how it happened. But, George, it, it's a relatively close fight. I mean, the, the guy is in the fight all the way in the eyes of most. You heard how Harold scored it. I think that you'd be in a small minority in saying that James no, won all of the early minority. rounds. I might be a minority. You'd be a large minority. <laughs> That's a very good point. In Listen, saying that James won all if, the early rounds. If, if uh, uh, Montel Williams won that fight, Kyle's lay eggs. All right, what is it? that the judges failed to understand or grasp? Is it Tony's punching power, punch by punch, that they missed? Oh, if you try to rationalize why they did that, it would even make it even greater an insult. Uh, I, it, it's, it's strange things have happened. As Howard Cosell, uh, my sitting here, I just got to tell it like it is. So, so I, you I'm, think it's I'm just shocked. inexplicable, cannot yeah, be explained? I, no, you just can't explain it. It's a shocking, and uh, I just don't see how it happened. This guy was staggered throughout the ring, throughout the fight. He's, James Tony even uh, uh, helped him up a few times, trying to seek a knockout. What are you going to give him, aggression? No, I'm not buying that. Look, I buy cheeseburgers, but I don't buy those hot dogs. Larry Merchant stands yes, by Yes, I do. In I the buy ring. hot dogs, too. I take that back. You do. Larry Merchant stands by in the ring with the winner, Montel Griffin. Montel Griffin, congratulations. Were you surprised that in a fight against such a, a, high, a highly known, high-profile prize fighter that you got the decision? No, I'm not surprised. I mean, I thought I'd jab, I'd jab him really three to one, four to one. The, my, my hardest shots was much cleaner than his. My jab, he was running too hard, snapping his head back every time. So, I, no, I'm not surprised. You know, I thought I'd box him. I didn't know when they said the first uh, judge scored a draw, I was like, oh, my goodness. They got me. But uh, he hurt you early in the fight. You, you, you kept your balance somehow. How badly were you hurt? Was, it was just a uh, surprise punch caught me off balance. I didn't see it. And um, I regrouped together real good. You know, I moved around, cleared up my head, and went back to business. Did you surprise him, do you think, by sticking your head on his chest a lot? That's not 
very characteristic of the way you have fought many fights. Right, well, with James Tony, even though he's not that tall of a light heavyweight, he needs room to throw punches. You know, he, he, he likes to wing his punches. He needs the room. So I shot the jab, made him run into it, and I clinched, then I stepped around to the right and tried to get my left hook up off right, but I didn't, I didn't land my left hook like I wanted to. This is your first big professional fight. What do you attribute to the fact that you were able to maintain your poise, not get excited, and so on. Is this because you started so young in the ring? Well, first of all, I dedicate this to my father, Clarence Griffin. If it wasn't for him, I would never be here. And I also give thanks to my boss man, Eddie Fudge, Thayer Torrance and Hedman Lewis, my brother Tim Griffin. They uh, took me over two years ago, taught me little things in and out, but just by, by, by nature, I'm just a very low-key, relaxed person. So, you know, when I got hurt or he caught me at a good shot, I stay relaxed. I'm a man, you know, I'm, I'm, I was ready for this. This is how superstars are born. They gotta be somebody who's up there. So this is how, you, this is how you're born. Thank you very much, Thank Martel. You very much. Again, congratulations.